Today, I will 100% predict every single playoff game in the 2024 NFL season. And we're gonna be starting off with the Buccaneers Eagles game. Well, usually I would pick the Eagles, but they just got a lot of injuries in the last game of the season. And I would like to respond to you and say that the Eagles are a nitty gritty team. They fight tooth and nail every single time. Sure, AJ Brown's a little banged up, his knee hurts a little bit, but I know he's gonna be out on that field. And do you guys forget that they have Devontae Smith? Devontae Smith is easily a top 20 wide receiver in the game behind A.J. Brown. And their wide receiver core is pretty solid. They also got Julio Jones as well. And yes, he's a little washed, but I do think the wide receiver core of the Eagles combined with Jalen Hurts, Jason Kelsey, and even DeAndre Swift are going body the Buccaneers defense. I will admit Baker Mayfield's pretty hot. He has a pretty good few games and they have a great wide receiver and running back core in Rasheed White and Mike Evans along with Chris Godwin. However, I do think the Eagles are going to win against the Buccaneers. I know that's a little controversial. People are going to be like, the Eagles suck now. They went like 1-5 in five the last season. But you forget, they went 10-1 in one at the beginning. People are now realizing how to stop the tush push, right? So now they're going to bring out the fakes. They're going to try to dominate their first round. And I guarantee you that the Buccaneers will lose that game. Now we head over to the Lions-Rams game, where Stafford is coming home. I will admit, the script writers for this season for the NFL... Top tier. Top tier NFL script writers, I have to admit, top tier. But man, Stafford coming to the Lions. I have to say, I think it'll be an absolute dogfight. I think it's going to be like 35 to 38 or 28. 35 to 28, I would say. Lions winning. Now, the reason why I think 35 to 28 is appropriate is because the Rams offense has been insane. They have Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua, and obviously Kyron Williams, who's been absolutely popping off. However, the Lions defensive line with Aiden Hutchinson is going absolutely insane. And they have a super, super young defensive core with Brian Branch. And they also have the middle linebacker, Jack Campbell. Shout out Hawkeyes. But I think the Lions are going to take away from the Rams solely because the Rams have a solid position. But they are overestimating how good their defense is. I don't think the Rams defense is good enough to stop Amon Ross St. Brown, Laporta, and Gibbs all at the same time with the combined throw power of Jared Goff, while also keeping up offensively with the Puka Nakua and Stafford offense. I think both offenses are going to go head to head, but I do think the Lions will come away with either a pick or a fumble or something late in the game to seal it for the Lions to win their first playoff game in forever. Next, we have the Cowboys Packers. Now, yes, I'm a Bears fan, so usually I would be like, yep, Cowboys win 100%. And that's exactly what I'm going with. I think the Cowboys win against the Packers 28 to 21. And the reason why I say that is because one, I think the spread is like negative seven or something. But the Cowboys defense is absurd. I think Deron Bland gets a pick, maybe a pick six against Jordan Love. Jordan Love's been playing amazing. But again, the Packers are one of the youngest, if not the youngest team to be in this playoffs yet. I think their combined age is like 23 point something as their like average age. And they're a super young team, which means they're going to make mistakes. I think that there's a lot of veterans on the Cowboys and Tony Pollard's been amazing. CeeDee Lamb, obviously one of, if not the best wide receiver in the entire league right now behind Tyree Kill. I do think the Cowboys have way more talent, and I think talent is going to beat the young adversity that the Packers have, but don't get me wrong, they will put up a fight. Now into one of my favorite games of the entire, entire week. It's going to be Texans-Brown, and the reason why I love this game so much is because it's going to be a rookie versus an insanely seasoned veteran. You've got a Super Bowl winner in Joe Flacco going against CJ Stroud, the rookie of the year, and I have to admit, I think the Texans and the Browns are going to play phenomenally. However, I do think the Browns are going to win. That's because the NFL scriptwriters are going to play a hand in this. I think that there's going to be a penalty, maybe a slight penalty that's going to cause the Texans to lose a point or two. And I think the final score is going to be 24 to 14 Browns. Only because I think the Browns defense is going to stop CJ Stroud a lot. However, I do think CJ Stroud will be above 240 passing yards because he's going to try to get down the field so much it just gets stopped right before the goal line every single time. I think the Browns defense is elite, and I think it will carry Joe Flacco as much as they need to to get a few touchdowns, causing them to go into the divisional round. Now, in my opinion, the next two games are probably the weirdest games we'll see. First, the Chiefs-Dolphins. Now, you would say the Chiefs defense is number two in the league, and you would be correct. And you would say the Dolphins has one of the most explosive offenses in the entire league. I also agree with that. However, however, however... 
the Dolphins and the Chiefs are going to be playing in negative 5 degree weather, which I do believe will affect the catching stats. So I think Tua Tungvaloa and Patrick Mahomes will have lower than 220 passing yards each, but I also think the run game is going to be elite. So who is the better run game out of the two teams? It's going to be the Dolphins. The Dolphins have such a better run offense than the Chiefs. I know Pacheco has that angry runs mentality, runs like he's running down the hall late for class back in high school. But man, the Dolphins have Raheem Mostert and a chain. They've been running the ball so effectively all year. And I think Tyree Kill will be able to get a few yards, maybe around 60 receiving yards. But with how cold it is, I don't think anyone's going to be able to catch the ball. Especially Kadarius Tony. but you know, no hate on the guy. He had a few drop passes early in the year. But the Chiefs have one of the most drop passes when the weather is good across any team in the entire league. I do think the Dolphins will take the edge on that, not because they're the better team, but because they have the better run offense. Now we get into Bills Steelers. Now, uh, yeah, sorry Steelers fans. I you have Mason Rudolph, uh, you have Najee Harris, y you have George Pickens. Yeah, against the Bills, you're. Sorry, I got nothing. I got nothing. The Bills are gonna wipe the Steelers. I think it's going to probably be like. Oh, I didn't give a score prediction for Chiefs Dolphins. I think it's going to be like 14-7. Uh <laughs> or 20 it's probably going to be like 24-21 Dolphins maybe off run games, but all of it are going to be rushing touchdowns. But for the Bills Steelers game, I think it will be like 17-7 Bills win. Just cuz the Steelers defense will carry a lot. I think they will carry a lot. But you have Mason Rudolph. And Mason Rudolph, I'm sorry, he's not that good. Compared to Josh Allen and the elite offense, and the fact that I think the Bills have taken out top five teams the past five games, I think the Bills are going to wipe the floor with the Steelers. But now we go on to the divisional round. And oh my gosh, the, oh my, mm, the script writers were in their bags, their bags in this one. I tell you this right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting off with Eagles 49ers. Such a good game on the line here because of the rivalries. This entire divisional is all based on rivalries that happened in the past year or so. If you guys recall, Brock Purdy got hurt when the 49ers went against the Eagles in the divisional round last year. And that is why the 49ers fell to the Eagles heading to the Super Bowl. However, this time Brock Purdy is healthy and the 49ers are on a rampage. I think they have the best fullback, the best left tackle, the best halfback, one of the best QBs in the entire game, top five, top three tight end in the entire league, and their defense is one of the best defenses we've ever seen in the history of defenses, period. Maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, might be better than the Legion of Boo. Might, might. That's how good this defense is. And I do think that the Eagles will not be able to compete with the 49ers based off their injuries. Now, I think they can compete with the Buccaneers just because it's a younger team and the Buccaneers are kind of unproven. They haven't really played a lot of super, super good competition in the past few weeks. However, the 49ers are a formidable opponent who absolutely wiped the floor with the Cowboys and wiped the floor with the Eagles earlier this season. And yes, this is called a wipe in. 42 to 19, and that is when they're all healthy. Now they're banged up and the 49ers are going to take it. I think that score though is going to be pretty high. I think that one's going to probably be... I want to say 21-17. It's going to be really close, but 21-17 would be my prediction for the 49ers-Eagles game. Now into the Lions-Cowboys. A great script writer here talked about how the Cowboys won against the Lions because Decker didn't report. Sure, dude. But I don't think that the Lions are going to come to the divisional round and not push. I really don't. I think the Lions are going to beat the Cowboys. And here's the reason why. One, they have the aggression because of the Taylor Decker thing. Not only are they fighting for something, but they're fighting for the fact that they deserve to win the game prior to this. And now they're fighting for a spot in the conference championship. On top of that, the Cowboys seem a little cocky. I'm not going to lie. When you see CD Lamb out there, you see the Cowboys offense. They feel like they can just chuck it 90 yards downfield. And again, CeeDee Lamb kind of cooked the Lions. I'm not going to lie. He kind of cooked them. 227 yards and a touchdown. Great. 97 of those yards and that touchdown all came from one literal Hail Mary play where the DB did not even come close to CeeDee Lamb. And that was because they thought he probably got sacked. Dak probably got sacked at the time. 
I do think the Lions overall are going to be a better team, and that also means that the Cowboys offensive coordinator and coach will be fired after this season, and I feel really bad for Cowboys fans because they can't win anything since 1995 or 85 or whenever they won their last championship, but I'm a Bears fan. 1985 is all I got, okay? But overall, though, the Lions have a dog in the fight. The Cowboys think that they're the best in the world, and when you think you're the best, you're not. And when you're the underdog and you know you have dog in the fight to prove that you were supposed to win both games, this one and the previous time you guys met, after the Taylor Decker thing, there's going to be some teeth grinding during that game. It's going to be really close. I think that this one will be a shootout though. 35-28 Lions, like that's going to be a super offensive game. But I don't know. 35-28 just seems right. Maybe, maybe. 35 to 31 but we'll see but i do think the lions will win making the conference championship 49ers versus lions and now we head over to the afc where the nfc is kind of locked up at the lions the 49ers however the afc is kind of all up in the air i will admit before i say this the chiefs very well could win the next game and make this chiefs bills and browns ravens where like this alone would just be phenomenal like just unreal script writer script writer things where like the bills versus the chiefs which you guys don't know that's how the chiefs got to the super bowl originally was the all i think the overtime game where the chiefs won in overtime and the bills didn't even get a chance to score they changed that rule because of the bills chiefs game a couple years ago and obviously joe flacco versus ravens to get to the conference championship would be amazing however this is where we're at if i had a guess though this is pretty much how it would turn out here and here like, this is where I'd be at, but we're not. So now we got Browns Bills. Now, I think the Browns defense is good. Don't get me wrong. And I think that Joe Flacco is actually going to show up against the Bills. Now, yes, it could be Bills Browns and the Bills win like 35 to 0. However, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I call it, I call it now, Browns Ravens conference championship yes i predicted both divisional rounds back to back without any explanation let me go into depth first joe flacco is there to prove to prove that he deserves to win another super bowl right but not only that this man's got a million dollars per win on the line if he wins the conference championship he gets a mil and i think if he wins the division he gets 500k that's a lot of money riding on the line for joe flacco and i think he's gonna play his heart out amari cooper's healthy they have one of the best run games in the league and to be honest, the Bills have looked really shaky. Now, the reason why I say that is because the Browns have a formidable offense and defense, and they have one of the best defenses in terms of yards per game across the entire board. But if we take a look at the Bills offense and how they stacked up to other defenses throughout the league, you can see that earlier in the season, they lost to the Jaguars, they even lost to the Patriots. The Patriots suck this year. Not only that, they lost to the Broncos. And then they almost lost to the Patriots again. Now, yes, they had a very, very good wins against the Cowboys, the Chargers, the Chiefs, the Dolphins. But if you take a look at these scores right here, they're all one possession games, meaning one possession changed the entire game. And I do think the Browns can get a takeaway, which will allow the Browns to beat the Bills. Now, I do think the Dolphins-Ravens game is going to be absolutely amazing. And the reason why, though, I say the Ravens are going to be the Dolphins is because I think back-to-back -back times, the Ravens have blown out the Dolphins. Like earlier this season, they lost 56 to 19. That wasn't even Lamar trying. They scored 21 points in the fourth, meaning that all their starters were probably pulled and they were just letting like the Ravens score. I think the Ravens are a very, very good team. But man, against the Dolphins, they look like the most formidable team out there, bro. And now we have, again, one of the best storylines Again, the script writers are in their bag. First, you have the 49ers and Lions. Earlier in the year, the Lions and the 49ers ran the exact same play back-to-back -back games almost, and both scored a touchdown on it. So there's going to be a tiny rivalry between them, be like who can run the better plays. But at the same time, too, both are very, very fun teams to watch. I don't think any fan base is super toxic between the two, but I also think both are super passionate, saying that they want to win. Brock Purdy is something to prove now. Now that he's the undrafted guy, he was injured last year. He needs to prove that he can take the 49ers to a Super Bowl. He needs to win this game. Jared Goff's contract is probably still secured, and the Lions are just a super young team, where I think the Lions will win the Super Bowl next year. But for now, 
I think the 49ers are just built more well-rounded than any other team. Now, barring injuries, I think the Brock Purdy throws for three touchdowns and McCaffrey hits two, which means it's going to be a super, super high scoring game. Again, a 35 game, 35 point game. The Lions, I don't think are going to play a lot of defense against the Cowboys or the 49ers. But then again, they're going against probably the three biggest powerhouses in terms of like throw accuracy, domination, run games, everything, because they're going against 49ers, Cowboys and the Rams. All three are formidable opponents. And I wouldn't be surprised the Lions let up a lot of points. They even let a lot of points up earlier in the year against some teams. However, I do think the 49ers are way more experienced and way more well-rounded than the Lions. I think the Lions have a really decent quarterback, decent wide receivers, and a decent halfback. But the 49ers have the best wide receiver core in the entire league, or one of the best. They have one of the best QBs in terms of the MVP season. Third best tight end, best left tackle, best running back. Like, you, you can go on and on about all the best players. I think the 49ers are literally, like, the most stacked team of all time. And then we have Ravens-Browns. <sighs> Man, Ravens-Browns. Flacco going against his former team in the conference championship. I will admit this is, again, one of the best scripts. I like scripts. That's why I'm going with this prediction. But I also think this is a clear cut. Nope, don't want the 49ers to win that. Sorry. But I don't, but I also think this is a clear cut Ravens win. And it's just very interesting to me because I think that if they can beat the Dolphins as well as they should, they should be able to beat the Browns. Now, I think it's going to be a little more challenging just because it's a division game, right? Browns versus Ravens. But I also think the Browns versus Ravens game will be one to remember just because Joe Flacco is going to give it his all. And all the Ravens are going to be like, don't hit Joe Flacco, please. He's the guy that gave us our first Super Bowl. Maybe. I don't, I don't know how many Super Bowls the Ravens have. But then you got the Browns fans who are like, we haven't won anything in our entire lives, bro. Let's win. And it's it's going to be a lot of fan bases clashing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think that game is going to be the best game that we see all season. And I really don't know how I can put the Ravens not winning that game, though. I don't see the Browns being super consistent with how consistent the Ravens been. And on top of that, I believe Mark Andrews should be back at that time for the Ravens, which means they'll have all of their star power and they have an amazing wide receiver running back core. It's, I don't know. I just think the Ravens are a better team to watch and I think they'll win overall. And now it's a coin toss. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do a score prediction for the Ravens Browns. We'll say 21-17. Nah, 24-21. 24-21 Ravens. I'll say that. I think it's going to be 24-21 Ravens. Maybe, maybe Justin Tucker field goal to win it. That'd be kind of cool. Now we got the 49ers Ravens, where I think everyone has this as their Super Bowl predictors. I just can't tell you a definitive win. I can't give you a reason why the 49ers should win or the Ravens should win. I think both are the number one seed. Both deserve to win. Obviously, there could be some setups. There can be some Buccaneers going on. There could be 49ers to 49ers, where the Lions beat the Cowboys to 49ers here. But overall, I can't justify someone telling me that 49ers are going to go to three Super Bowls in how many years and lose all three. That like doesn't make any sense. But also the storyline of Lamar winning his first Super Bowl would be really cool. OBJ getting his Super Bowl ring. OBJ getting his second Super Bowl ring. I forgot he won with the Rams, man. That storyline would have been so much cooler if he didn't have a ring, but whatever. I have to tell you that this is supposed to be 100% correct, right? 100%. Which means I can't give you a 100% correct answer for 49ers Ravens. If I choose 49ers Ravens, it's not going to be 100% correct because both deserve to win. And we'll just have to be in store for one of the best Super Bowl performances we've seen since, I believe, Atlanta Patriots. It's going to be that hype. I think that those teams are going to go in there. It's going to be a great Super Bowl and I, I really don't think the refs are going to have anything to do with it. I think it's just going to be good old-fashioned gun-ho football. But if I had to guess who would win that game, it'd be the 49ers. Now, who do I want to win? Ravens. I think the Ravens should win. The Ravens deserve to win. They've had an incredible season. The walk-off punt return from the, I think, the Rams game was amazing. And the Ravens are a young team. I think they'll be back. I think Lamar deserves MVP. But again, the 49ers this year are just so stacked. They're too stacked. They're they're the Rams again. Where the Rams were so stacked throughout the board, they had the best cornerback, the best like linebackers, the 
best of the best D linemen. They have one of the best wide receiver cores in Cooper Cup and OBJ. Like all those players on the Rams team two years ago was so stacked. And we're seeing that again in the 49ers. I just don't see a world where the 49ers don't win but I would love Lamar to win, if that makes sense. And I also think this is going to be a crazy Super Bowl as well. 42-35, 49ers. Yeah, this entire like playoff, I do not predict a single defense being played. Like, at all. Against the Browns, maybe. Like, the Browns and Steelers games will probably be low scoring. The rest are just going to be gun-ho football. And I think we're in store for one of the best playoff runs that we've seen. And I think it'll be one of the best games that we've seen since Chiefs of Bills two years ago like this game was elite in the divisional round but we're going to see that again when the 49ers take on the ravens in the super bowl and i cannot wait and that is going to conclude the 100 correct 2023 2024 playoff prediction for the nfl if you guys enjoyed today's video feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content i try to do this video every single year i love making this video and if i was wrong about any of these let me know down below in the comments but if you guys want to see one more video of mine, check that video right above. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I love you. God loves you more and hope all the blessed rest of your day. Peace.